Hello everybody and welcome back. Root Beer here with question number six now on the 2004 Euclid competition. It's another two-parter. Got a light bulb and a written question, which tends to be the style for the middle questions. Uh, what have we got? So, part A. We just need our final answer. Lori has a loony, three quarters, three dimes, three nickels, and five pennies. <coughs> she wishes to purchase a toy helicopter for exactly $1.34. What is the maximum number of coins that she can use to make this purchase? The maximum number. Interesting. Uh, in Canada, a loony is worth a dollar, a quarter is worth uh, 25 cents, uh, or, or 0.25 of a dollar. Dime is, uh, I, I like that they do this because not everyone's going to be writing in Canada. So you explain the currency, especially the loony. I mean, most people have heard of a quarter and a dime and nickel and, and pennies just because of the prevalence of, of American culture around the world. But uh, loony, that's, that's a Canadian thing right there. Uh, for anyone wondering, it's because we got loons on our on our dollar bill coin or on our dollar on our dollar coins. We used to have a dollar bill. We don't have it anymore. Um, look at the maximum number. That's an interesting thing. Okay. Um. Well, no matter what happens, we've got to use the four pennies to make up the four cents. Right, yeah. Got to use four penny. There's no other way to get, because everything else is a multiple of 0 0.05. So there's no way about it. Now, even if you're using the most or the least, you have to use four pennies to make the, the 0 0.04 dollars. So this leaves us with a dollar thirty that we need to make up. Now, I would want to avoid using the loony as much as possible. Don't want to use that dollar. Do we have enough with the others uh, to to make that up? So three, three quarters is not enough to make a dollar. That'd be 0. 0.75. But then with three dimes, uh, then we'd be up to 0. 0.05. And then with three nickels, we'd be at 1.2, which is a little shy. So we must use the loony. As the rest of the change... Total, so three quarters, three dimes, and three nickels. That's that's what's left, right? Yeah, so that's going to be... Uh, that total is $1.20. And yes, I know there's another penny, but he's he's out of the game. We had to use four... You can only use four pennies. So we've got to use the uh, dollar, or the loony here. So that leaves... So, so one loony. And that leaves... 0 0.30 to make up. Okay. So what could we do here? Well, we could have uh, one quarter, and then that would leave uh, five cents, so we'd have one nickel, and so that's uh, two coins. Or we could have um, three dimes, and that would be three coins, and that would make up 30. Uh, or we could use uh, two dimes and two nickels, and that's four coins. Could we use just one dime? No, because we need 20 cents left over, and that, that can't be made up with just nickels or quarters. Quarters are too much, and there aren't enough nickels. There's only three of them. So we can't use one dime. We can't be only using nickels. That totals 15 cents. So I think this is the critical part here, the four dimes and two, or the two dimes and two nickels. So that's uh, four plus one plus four. Nine coins for the maximum. And we might put a little something around the nine to show that that is the final answer that we want. Nine coins there. Okay. Um, you know, so we were able to explain our reasoning a little bit. You know, you, you could explain maybe a bit more than I did about uh, why you need 
the four pennies and why the, the fifth penny will never enter into any calculation. You can explain a little bit why you have to have the loony, I guess. Um, and then it boils down to how can we make 30 cents and, you know, sort of casework. So I'd give this one maybe a mark for the penny realization, a mark for the loony realization, um, and then, you know, a mark for, for getting the four at the end for the total of nine. That That's just how I would break this down if I were creating a marking scheme. I don't know if that's actually what they've got there. Uh, but that's A. Answer is nine. But now let's get on to the supposedly tougher one, the written one, B. All right. Digital images consist of a very large number of equally spaced dots called pixels. In fact, if you're watching this on a monitor, you are using pixels in some way as well. Uh, the resolution of an image is the number of pixels per centimeter in each of the horizontal, horizontal and vertical directions. Thus, an image with dimensions 10 centimeter by 15 centimeter and a resolution of 75 pixels per centimeter has a total of 10 times 75, 10 centimeters, 75 pixels per centimeter, times 15 times 75, 15 centimeters, 75 pixels per centimeter, uh, giving us a total number of 834,750 uh, pixels. If each of these dimensions was increased by n percent and the resolution was decreased by n percent, the image would have been uh, would have uh, 300, 345,600 pixels. Determine the value of n. Okay. So increased by n percent. Um, so increased by n percent. I don't like really working with with percents. So I'm going to make this observation. Increased by n percent is the same as multiply by one plus n percent over a hundred percent which is effectively just 1 plus n over 100. Decreased by n percent is the same as multiplying by 1 minus n percent. This is useful information. I'm just stating it so the marker knows where these numbers are going to come from in a moment. Okay. But this is sort of useful knowledge to know if you want to convert quickly between, you know, increased by 60% or, or decreased by 30%. And this stuff can even be useful in the real world. Uh, if you're good with uh, calculations in your head, you can, you can say, oh, that uh, dress is 60% off. So that's really going to be, you know, multiply it by 1 minus 60 over 100, 1 minus 0. 0.6, multiply it by 0. 0.4. Multiply that price in your head by 0. 0.4 and uh, you're going to be all set. You're going to know approximately how uh, how expensive that dress is, or whatever. But this is useful stuff to know, I would say. I, I use it occasionally just walking around and shopping. So uh, this is some real-world math, we could say. But uh, so uh, if this is the case, then... Well, what, what happened? Each of the dimensions increased, right? It was the dimensions increased. Dimensions increased by an N percent. So my new dimensions are uh, 10, 1 plus n over 100, times 15, uh, whoops, 1 plus n over 100. Okay, and my resolution was 75 pixels per inch, or per centimeter, but now it's decreased by n percent. Okay. So the new number of pixels it went from uh, that really big number it was eight something wasn't it? Uh, so it was eight four three 750, and that was 10 times 15. You take the, the dimensions, 
and you multiply by the resolution squared is just how to sort of parse this little bit because every dimension and there's going to be two of them is multiplied by the resolution so we just square resolution and then multiply it by the dimensions and that works out just fine okay so this can actually uh, affect it uh, uh, affect our, our calculation here so it went to a new number which is uh, it was three four five six something like that yeah three four five six and this was our new dimensions times the new resolution squared. Okay. But this is just going to be, well, we can pull out some of these numbers, the 10, the 15, and the 75 squared. And then what are we left with? We're left, well, we've got two 1, uh, 1 plus n over 100 squareds, and we've got 2, 1 minus n over 100 squareds. This part here is 843750. Eight, and then, we can uh, square the big thing. We can take the square out of both, and now it's just a multiplication of those two, but this looks like difference of squares. So if you make that connection, you can multiply these two really fast. 8, 4, 3, 7, 5, 0. And then we have a squared, which is 1, minus b squared. So that'll be n squared over what's 100 squared. It's uh, 10,000. We square that again. So now, uh, if I divide both sides by 843,750, I will get... Uh, this calculation right here. So let's uh, simplify the left-hand side there for a moment. And heck, we could even square root it while we're at it. 843750. Uh, it's uh, 0.4096, and I recognize 4096 as a power of 2. But we'll square, it while, square, it while, uh, while, square root it while we're at it. Four oh nine six. So we get uh, zero point six four. If you want to break this up into two steps, one where you simplify the the left hand side and the other where you square root, that's fine. But we get point six four. Uh, if we swap sides here, we get n squared over ten thousand is one minus point six four. This is basically a hundred. This is sixty four. So we get thirty six. Okay. Now multiply by 10,000, and uh, what are we going to get? We're going to get n squared, and then the decimal place moves over four spots, so point, uh, let's make sure, yep, 360, square root this, and we're going to get 60. Okay. So, uh, yeah, we just wanted to determine the value of n. There it is. We didn't really need a whole lot of words there. We explained our uh, we explained our, our, our multiplication for in, standing in for increasing and decreasing by percentages. Uh, we might have explained why we can do the 75 squared really quickly, but you know, not a big deal. Other than that, it's just a lengthy calculation and a rearrangement. You could probably have a nice little therefore statement. You say, you know, therefore the value of n is 60%, or you know. Therefore, the dimensions increased by 60% and the resolution decreased by 60%. You can say all sorts of things like that. Um, yeah. If you wanted to double check after all that, you could take your original 10, increase it by 60%. So that'd be 16. Take your 15, increase that by 60%. Uh, so that'd be uh, increase it by 9. So that'd be 24. So 16 times 24. And then multiply that by, well, 75 decreased by 
60%, what's 60% of 75? Uh, divided by 5 is 15. Multiply that by 3, so minus uh, 45. And square that. And I do get the 3, 4, 5, 6, 0, 0 that they did ask for. So this, after all this, the 60% really does fit in the original calculation. We didn't make a mistake somewhere. Okay, that's question six. Actually kind of simple in my opinion. Um, there wasn't a whole lot to write for the reasoning with the part A, which is fine because we just needed the final answer of nine anyway. And this one, I'm surprised there wasn't a whole lot to work around. It was mostly just plug stuff into the formula, solve for n. Hopefully question seven will be a bit, of, a bit more of a challenge. It's further down in the paper, so we expect that. But uh, whatever it is, I'll see you guys for the next video.